10, 9, ignition sequence starts, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Welcome to part 9 of our video series covering the new 1100 scale Saturn V kit from Estes. It's time to start working on the pointy end of our rocket. In this episode of our build series, we'll be assembling the command and service modules, the launch escape system, and the spacecraft lunar module adapter. After we get everything put together, we'll prime and paint these components. Here's what we'll need for this step. This is the blow molded spacecraft lunar module adapter. All we need to do to this is just clean up a couple of minor seam lines. We'll need the tubes we primed earlier for the service module and the launch escape system motor. Here are the injection molded parts for the command module and launch escape system. And finally, we have a little bonus part right here. This is a 3D printed escape motor system lattice that came from our friends at Galactic Manufacturing. We'll also need this pattern sheet that's included with the kit. Over here is a template that will wrap around the service module tube to mark the locations of the reaction control system components. Let's start by cleaning up these seams on the Spacecraft Lunar Module Adapter, or SLA. Now the designers at Estes have done a great job of hiding these seams along existing panel line detail. There's just this one little section where there is no panel line detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a sanding stick and just polish out this little area right here. I'll go to a fine stick now. We'll do the other side. And that's all there is to that. Next, we'll put some tape on the shoulders to prepare it for priming and painting. Let's start by prepping all of our injection molded parts for priming and painting. This is the command module component here. Now this little element right here is what's called the umbilical fairing, and it's an, uh, an aerodynamic cover that covers all the cabling that goes from the command module to the service module that's positioned behind it. On the sides of this, there are some unfortunate molding marks that we can get rid of very simply. We'll use a sanding stick. Switch to a fine sanding stick to polish it. And that should do it. Now just as an FYI, this little piece here is a bulkhead that's designed to fit into the aft element of the command module part. In the past, both Estes and Centuri have offered 1 100th scale Little Joe 2 kits that used this part set as part of that, uh, that offering. This particular element is not used on this model. We have a bunch of tiny parts that need to be prepped. Let's start by clipping these little reaction control system parts from the sprue. I'm using a sprue nipper here. I introduced you to this tool, oh, several episodes ago. I think it was our display nozzle episode. We'll use a sanding stick to clean up the sprue marks on the ends. And then right away, I'm going to attach these to a handling stick onto which I've attached some double-sided tape. That will help keep these from getting lost. They are tiny. Next, we'll separate the base of the launch escape system motor.
we'll attach that as well. Now the nose cone. This tiny little ring will be integrated with the lattice for our escape tower. We'll set that to the side. We're going to use that in just a moment. These are the nozzles for the launch escape system motor. We'll pull out some glue. I'm going to go ahead and pre-fit these. And then just add a drop of glue. Capillary action will draw the glue in. Set that to the side. Let's take a quick look at our escape tower lattice parts. Even though we have the galactic manufacturing lattice here, we're going to go ahead and assemble this. The best way I've found to assemble this is to drop the ring into place first. Got some tweezers here. Drop this into one side of the lattice. We'll hold that there for a moment. Next, we'll put the other side of the lattice in place. Need to make sure that our ring doesn't skitter out of the way. Definitely using magnification for this. I'm going to align the ends and just glue together one small portion of this, not the whole thing. I'll then use a pair of tweezers to squeeze that shut for a few moments. We'll rotate it 180 degrees and do a small section on the other side. Again, using the tweezers to hold it shut for a few moments. We'll do the other end and the other side. Just a little more here in the middle. And we'll let that dry. We can also go ahead and attach it to our handling stick. We can also go ahead and put the nozzles and the command module. We can also attach the galactic manufacturing tower lattice to that as well. Again, we're going to prep both tower lattices. That way we'll have a spare should anything happen to the one we choose to put on the model. We can also attach the spacecraft lunar module adapter to a handling stick for applying the primer, as well as the service module and the LES motor tube. This is a big moment for me. We are in our new paint booth. We are no longer slumming it in the horse trailer. We've upgraded to an empty hay barn. Now in the coming months, I'll be upgrading this a little bit with some ventilation and some better lighting, but for now, I'm just happy to have a new place to spray paint. We're using Tamiya White Primer here. Just a couple of light coats is all we need to do to get these parts ready. Same process as before, long strokes that start off the part and end off the part. After this dries overnight, we'll be ready to spray the color coats. Our primer has had the opportunity to cure overnight, so what we're going to do now is move the RCS nozzles to a separate stick and the launch escape system nozzles to a separate stick. All of these components will be painted white. The RCS nozzles will be painted a neutral gray color and the LES nozzles will be painted black. We're going to remove the service module tube from the handling stick we had it on for priming and move it on to its own separate stick for painting. We'll begin painting by spraying the spacecraft lunar module adapter, launch escape motor and many of the command module and launch escape system parts with pure white lacquer. 
Next, we'll hit the launch escape motor nozzles with black, followed by spraying the reaction control system quads with haze gray. Our technique here is the same as we've used before with multiple light coats applied in long strokes that begin and end off of the parts. Everything will get three coats, allowing about seven to 10 minutes between each layer. We're going to do something very different with our service module tube. We're going to paint it in layers. The first thing we're going to do is put an undercoat of black on it. We'll probably do two coats of the black. Before the black fully cures, we're going to do coats of gloss aluminum over that. The theory is that the, the layers of paint develop a more rich, more realistic looking finish. These are the reaction control system parts. We're about to pop them off of this handling stick. Once we've done that, we're going to use some of this copper paint and paint the nozzles with a brush. We can attach these to these photo clips. This is an ancient bottle of testers paint that I've had for probably 35 years. And we will slowly, painstakingly, paint the nozzles. And there we go. The first one's painted. We'll do three more. The paint has cured on all of these components and we're ready to start bringing them together. I've decided to go ahead and use the Galactic Manufacturing Tower Lattice because it's just got that lightness and airiness that makes it look so much more realistic. We'll still have the kit tower lattice available should anything happen to the Galactic Manufacturing Lattice post-flight. I'm especially pleased at how the service module component turned out. That undercoating technique with the black paint really does make a difference with metallics. We'll use a touch of thin cement to attach the launch escape motor nozzles to the underside of this shroud piece. I'll mix up a touch of epoxy. We'll put a touch of epoxy into both ends of the launch escape motor tube. I'm using epoxy because it's my preferred adhesive for dissimilar materials. And here we're, we're gluing paper to plastic. I'll just drag the tips of the tower lattice through the epoxy and then attach that. Simple as that. And I'll keep some pressure on that while it cures. We have some fresh epoxy for the other end of our escape tower. Again, I'm just dragging the legs of the escape tower through the epoxy. And now we'll carefully line that up with the holes on the command module. They drop right in place. We'll just keep some pressure on that for a few moments. We've wrapped the marking guide around the service module to mark the RCS quad locations. Next, we lightly punch each of those locations with a small awl. We can then remove the template and drill those out with a 1 32nd inch drill. We're almost done with the forward end of our Saturn V. Our last little task will be to install the RCS quads onto the sides of our service module. We'll do that using a little bit of epoxy. 
we're going to put a tiny, tiny dot of epoxy right on one of the holes we created and then drop an RCS quad into that hole. Line everything up and then wait for the adhesive to cure. We'll do that three more times. We have one more minor task to do before we move on. You'll recall this umbilical fairing from a little bit earlier. This needs to be painted a contrasting metallic color. Photographs of the command and service module shows that it's very close to the service module color, perhaps a touch lighter. I dug through my acrylic paints and came up with a few options. This is a flat aluminum, it's a little bit darker. This is a metallic gray, it's much darker. This is a titanium silver, and it is just slightly lighter than the gloss aluminum we used on the service module. So I think we're going to use this paint. Next, we need to mask this part off. We'll be using Tamiya masking tape for that. Now let's talk about masking tape a little bit. I never in my wildest dreams envisioned that someday I would go on the internet and talk at length about masking tape, but here I am. I'm living the dream. So, good rule of thumb is, you've got a quality model, use quality tapes. Anywhere where the tape touches a painted part of the model, I always use Tamiya masking tape. Now, this stuff is expensive and sometimes it can be hard to source. Now, when it comes time to attach overspray masks, I use a less expensive painter grade tape. These are 3M tapes that I've used for years with great success. So, touches the model this, doesn't touch the model, use this. Now I'm going to put an overspray mask on this. We'll cut a, a small window through this plastic and attach this to protect the rest of the part from overspray. This is where our inexpensive tape comes into play. And with that we have this little detail here, masked and the rest of the part protected. We're going to use an airbrush to apply this paint. Now, we're going to get much deeper into airbrushing in a couple of episodes, but just a general introduction right here. Uh, an airbrush is basically a miniaturized spray gun, and we're going to use it to spray some of this paint onto that part of our model. This is a Pache SI single action brush, for those who are interested, and I've got a compressor just off screen. Again, we'll get into a much more complete discussion of airbrushing when we start applying the roll patterns to the model in a couple of episodes. We've let the paint settle down for a little bit. We'll go ahead and pull the overspray mask off and start taking the tape off. And that looks beautiful. And with that, we have assembly and painting of all of the elements of the forward end of our model complete, plus a spare escape tower lattice. In our next installment, we'll be priming the main airframe assemblies, then applying the initial color coats of paint. Thanks for watching.